right. Yeah, I think I think we got it. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yep. No, I think we've got it. Chris, I just want you to try it one more time, if that's okay. Sure. Sure. Let me get clear about the direction I want you to go in. Uh. Ah. Uh, yep. Yeah. I want you to try it as if you're just talking to a friend down the pub. And now the end is here. And so I face that final curtain. My friend, I'll make it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I travelled each and every highway. And more. Much more than this. I did it... I did it my way. All right. Second only to taking action, the next most important thing that I always make sure to schedule is reviewing. Of course, it can feel lovely to feel busy every day, but we all know that being busy can sometimes be a very different thing to actually being productive in our business. And so making sure that you're reviewing the effectiveness of your actions is essential to make sure that you're continuing along the right path. Now, the most obvious way of reviewing is to calculate your return on investment with each action, your ROI. If you're submitting a certain number of auditions, then how many of those are translating into actual booked jobs. Or if you're sending a certain number of marketing emails, how many of those are converting into prospects and possibly clients? But reviewing, for me, is also an opportunity to take a real in-depth look at what I'm actually doing, to quantify what new skills and information that I've taken on board and where I might best deploy that knowledge going forward. Because not all value can be overtly tracked. Now, I've previously talked about the value of failure in this video here. The whole approach of overcoming perfection paralysis by still doing the action even if it might fail because we're still learning by that process. The best way of eliminating errors is to test them through action. But the next step is to identify what has been learned and then determine where that learning could be best deployed going forward. Now, as a specific example, I would like to take this YouTube channel, which I've been running weekly for about 18 months now. It originally started as a place where I could answer very client-centric questions about the whole process of ordering a voiceover, and those videos have had a lot of organic reach, and they've also sometimes resulted in actual jobs through clients as well. But their primary purpose was always as content that I could use in my follow-up emails for my direct marketing. I I then started using this channel really as a place to kind of practice with branding and editing for the Skillshare courses that I posted about a year and a half ago. And just to take a moment to acknowledge that those courses are freely available, all you need to do is sign up for a free trial. Now those courses did definitely benefit as a result from the exposure that this channel has given them, and that's resulted in a pretty consistent stream of <gasps> passive income without me actually having to charge my peer group for the pleasure of it. Working on these videos has also taught me a lot about the basics of good content creation having an effective hook, defining a real clear brand throughout all of the content that you post, and being able to actually batch content through a very clear workflow, which has benefited both this channel and the content that I share on other socials too. Creating these videos in earnest during lockdown really helped to keep me sane and also connect me with a whole range of different voiceover peers as well as other creatives, which was really lovely. Also, as I mentioned in this video, being able to turn these videos into blogs that I then post on my website has really also helped my SEO. It's also taught me how content creation has really been useful in consolidating my own learning. It's one thing to be told something, but another thing entirely to actually put that in action. And then subsequently challenging myself to create videos about how I put that into action has really been good in embedding the best processes. I've never measured this channel's worth on the number of subscribers I get, although obviously it would appeal to my ego with vanity metrics, but I have really enjoyed the conversations that I've had and the new people that I've met as a result. But returning to the subject of this video, the really important thing is that having a process to review all of these things has given me a more full three-dimensional understanding of the benefits of the whole process rather than just looking at a return on investment or conversion ratio. I'd really recommend scheduling a quarterly review of this kind, where you write out every action that you're taking in your business and then you list the pros and cons of each activity as thoroughly as possible. If an activity has a higher number of cons than pros, then rather than just discounting it altogether, 
together. Think about whether or not there are certain aspects of it you could carry on to different activities instead, because the balance of an activity's effectiveness will change over time. We can't just keep doing the same things, hoping that they'll still work. This is the approach that I'm adopting to the future of this YouTube channel. While taking some time off, I realized that the cost in terms of time and money wasn't really worth justifying me posting consistently anymore. Content-wise, I feel as if I've covered all of the subjects that I really feel passionate about that I wanted to share with my audience, and so continuing at the same rate would either involve me having to go back to the start and reappraise various bits of content, or covering subjects that I really don't have a lot of interest in, where I think other people are better at talking about them. The only way of justifying the two to three hours that it takes me to script and film these videos and upload them, as well as the cost of actually having them edited professionally, was if I monetized my coaching. And after reflecting on that, I just realized that's not something that I wanted to do, because I don't want to set up a Facebook group, and I don't really want to monetize my peer group that way. For me, as a performer, I want to be focusing on the really creative and performance aspects of my work, rather than just talking about processes all of the time. There are people already fulfilling that niche in the market who I think are brilliant, and who I would without hesitation recommend that you check out. Looking at you, Mark Scott. All the benefits from this channel are something that I'll still carry with me whilst moving forward, and I will still be posting on this channel. My next objective is to refresh my About Me video on my website, which I can do on this channel, as well as creating a series of case studies, taking clients through different examples and different workflows. And if new topics do arise that I do think justify a video, then obviously I will make one. So if you have any suggestions further down the line, please feel free to reach out to me. But I will no longer be posting on a weekly basis. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Joe, my wonderful editor, who has really been invaluable in increasing the production value of this channel. And Joe, please do stick your details somewhere on the screen here in case anybody might be interested in hiring you for the future. And last, but certainly not least, I wanted to thank all of you subscribers and viewers for following my journey thus far in voiceover. You can also follow me on Instagram, which is mainly cat videos, on TikTok, where I post daily voiceover tips, and on LinkedIn, where I pretend to be a little bit more professional. Wishing you all a great week, and I look forward to seeing you sometime soon.